So I am putting the target on UNC. This is the year that football goes after it, really goes after it. Does it feel different in Chapel Hill? Yes. Next question, Adam. (laughs) Is that a good thing that it feels different? (laughs) Is it a good thing that it feels different? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean that – you ask a very fine question. Actually, I like the way you're thinking because this is a question that some of us have been asking as well. Some of us uh, nerds in the uh, that pack on the keyboard. That's right. Um, you know, I mean, it was by UNC football definition, it was a special season last year. The nine and one star. Sure. They won the coastal. They go to the ACC championship game. These things don't happen. They were they were in the they were at least. Uh, a player in the college football playoff discussion for a while, for a while. until it fell off a cliff. Yep. Um, but, you know, 6-0 and this season, 30 points or more in every game, 40 points or more in every ACC game, it, it, it does feel different. And, and if you ask the guys who know, like Cedric Gray, the, the, the yep. great linebacker they have, Drake May, you've heard of him. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, you, the usual suspects. Right. Um, they say yes because it's it's an older team. All these guys pretty much went through this last year, with the exception of like Josh Downs and Antoine Green, who have moved right. on to the NFL. Um, there, there, there is a confidence. You know, I, I, I think I asked Gene Chizik. I've asked pretty much everyone how you go about. You know, you have all these stats. Right. How do you measure confidence? You know, I have a stat to measure everything, but you know, there is a feeling. And um, now with the place in the schedule where they've hit as you were alluding to uh, very nicely, um, you know, UVA, Georgia Tech, Campbell are the next three. Right. Um, it would be an upset uh, and a pretty big one if this team didn't get into November uh, at 9-0, and quite frankly, now that they're 6-0. and Well, you know, it's interesting, uh, and I, I want to give Victoria full credit for this because we have we kind of worked into – Georgia Tech being the, the Lego piece on the floor that when you step, oh my, I can't believe I just stepped on that and it hurts for like two hours. Um, I know the reference well. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Anybody that has kids and has played with Legos. And by the way, I ain't even, ain't even shy. I have built my share of Lego structures. We built a Lego Ooh. White House. Uh, not that, uh, well, I shouldn't say not that long ago. It was considerably ago. Uh, it was about seven years ago, but we have done that. Um, Georgia Tech has been a problem. So, especially over what the last four years, right? Uh, so well, it, it, it it's they are twelve uh, over the last twelve games. They're two and ten in Atlanta, UNC. So you know, hmm. scribble that one down for your notes next week, big boy. I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm writing it down right now. Uh, yeah, it's, two, it has two, been, two it has been a, a bad history down there for uh, for UNC, right? Yeah. And Georgia Tech, obviously, I think I saw them play play a few weeks ago. And I thought, oh, this team is going to be a little bit of a problem for the good teams because they play like they believe they're a good team. And confidence will take you a long way. Uh, Adam Smith from Inside Carolina is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. But I agree. Uh, these three games, and and I, we're not coaches, we're not players, they're not thinking this way, but I, I can. These should be wins. And we will already be in... The college football playoff stupid Tuesday evening shows that I don't watch, but people watch and pay attention to. And North Carolina is going to be featured prominently in there. So my guess is when we get to the first one, they're 10th now, three weeks from now, Ohio State or Penn State is losing Saturday. There are other matchups in in there that teams are going to, like eliminate themselves. North Carolina at nine and zero, they figure to be a have a great chance to be in that top six. That is going to be uncharted territory. How do you think they handle that? Get ninety nine point nine the fan out on location November fourth. No, November eleventh. The Dukies will be in Chapel Hill. Make every joke about. Uh, this isn't March. It's right. November. Yeah, like every this isn't basketball. I mean, that thing could be um, fairly large. I mean, Duke's schedule is uh, is a bear, right. obviously, obviously, but um, that thing could be fairly large. And it's and 
I'm going to mention this quickly because I, we, you and I could talk about this for the next five hours, and I know you do not have that time allotted for me because you, you obviously should not. But I mean, we, we, Brown, we would knock the next show, next show off the air, but whatever. Mac Brown, you're gonna, you, you, <laughs> you may have heard this already, but well, you did hear this at some point in your illustrious uh, sports reporting oh, career in the past. So Mac Brown, ever the uh, great communicator. Yeah. I mean, the guy's been a head coach for 35 years now. Uh, you know, it is, it, it, you find yourself sometimes, AG, stepping back a little bit when you're listening to these interviews that you do, these press conferences. And I actually thought this the other day. I was like, you know, I am pretty lucky yeah. kid from Mebane, North Carolina, to be able to cover Roy Williams yep. and to be able to cover Mac Brown because just the, the content is the word now that they give you. Yeah. I mean, so Mac is going through his normal like Monday morning, like nuts and bolts of everything that we go through. All of a sudden, he is telling a story about when he was the head coach at Texas and he gets a phone call and he picks it up and it's Bill Parcells on the other end of the phone. And Parcells, who Mac Brown played for at Florida State, wow. uh, apparently did not say hello or anything. He goes right into the <laughs> fact that what's happening with this Texas team that Vince Young was on. Right. Uh, there, it's akin to the big fat rat eating the poison cheese. Um, now, my brain, the first thing I thought was, what is Parcells' infatuation with rats and cheese? Like, <laughs> I feel like he has always talked about right. that. Um, but so that, so that Mac masterfully on Monday uh, had steered this to, you know, uh, the metaphor of he where knew. we are. Yep. We don't need to get too fat and happy. Parcells told this whole story. They were apparently that Texas team was getting ready to play Texas A&M and they were on a collision course with USC and Matt Leinart and Reggie Bush. And uh, they were playing a rivalry game against Texas A&M and Parcells from afar had noted they weren't taking their rival seriously enough. Um, so predictably, uh, we were told that on Tuesday when UNC's players showed up in the locker room, you guessed it, cheese hanging in every locker. Uh, I mean, yeah. I've heard this story yeah. like 8,000 times, yeah. but I guess I'm going to have to write about it again uh, because some of the players have been like, no, I, I had never heard the cheese story. The first time I ever showed up and got cheese in my locker. Um, so th that's where we are in Chapel Hill. Well, it sounds to me, Adam Smith from Inside Carolina is joining us, sounds to me like Mac Brown knows what's coming um, because he's been there. He's done that. He, I mean, he won a national championship at Texas. Uh, he's also been at the helm of some teams that probably didn't accomplish as much as he thought they should have. I don't know that that's been the case at UNC. He knew the year at well, year two of Sam Howell, he knew that they weren't quite as good as everybody else thought they were. He warned everybody about that. He was not surprised. Now, to a certain extent anyway, I think he was surprised that it went uh, so sideways so early, but he was not right. surprised overall. Um, Interestingly enough, that was the last time UNC was number 10 in the polls, was going into right. the 2021 season. They were 10 in the AP poll going up to right. Virginia Tech to open that season. Some people will tell you that Mac told Bubba Cunningham on the way up there that he had a bad feeling. Some people will tell you that. Right. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the, that, that season did not in any way match the hype that, that was rolling going into the year. I also think, though, that he knows that this team does legitimately have a chance. And just to fast forward for Adam Smith. And notice we have not mentioned the University of Virginia, who is the opponent on Saturday, <laughs> um, because it honestly... There's no reason to – I already gave some numbers out. There's no reason to X and O this. Uh, if North Carolina doesn't win this game handily, it's because they were snoozing. I mean, Virginia's just no good. And I th and I, I think we all agree that North Carolina is, including what Tez Walker has meant to their oh. offense, which has taken it uh, – I keep using the Spaceballs reference. They have gone to plaid offensively <laughs> and – that's the way it should be when you've got Drake May, a good running game, a good offensive line, and now you have dynamic playmakers on the outside to add to an already good offense beforehand. But let me fast forward to Duke. Because regardless of what happens with Duke over the next three weeks, I don't think they'll lose both Florida State and Louisville. I think that, I mean, they certainly could. And Wake Forest, I think, is is also involved in this 
three game stretch as well, and Wake is good enough to bother anybody. If Duke goes two and one over their next three, and they are whatever and two when mm-hmm. they roll into Chapel Hill, and it may be anyway, it'll be the biggest game these two teams have ever played against each other. I can't, I mean, not in modern football history, modern college football history, have Duke and North Carolina, Duke will be ranked if they go two and one over this next stretch, right? They'll, they'll still be Absolutely. ranked. Absolutely. I mean, it, this will be the biggest matchup in the history of this rivalry. I mean, can we dust off Charlie Choo Choo Justice? I don't know if there's, um, you know, there's got to be some old timer that could tell. Interestingly enough, when when you know when you're covering a team that hasn't lost, they're off to the six and zero start. You start digging through the record book, and uh, it's that '97 Mac Brown 1.0 team that they are chasing right now. Mm-hmm. That team got off to an eight and zero start before they lost to Florida State in the Judgment Day game right. um, that we all remember, or some of us remember. Um, but what I was going to say was when you started talking about the biggest Duke Carolina game ever. Um, you know, this Carolina has a chance, and at least offensively, their numbers have already hit this. They're they're putting up the most points they've put up to start a season since 1914, Who? which is over a hundred years ago. Um, and that team started 10 and 0, by the way, AG. Um, so like But who did they yeah, play, this- honestly, Adam? They didn't play anybody. They played eleven game schedule. You know who interrupted the undefeated season? UVA. Um <laughs> oh, I mean, the things you <laughs> Who's can learn write that? <laughs> <laughs> the game was in Richmond for some reason. I have no idea why, but it, in the UNC record book, it says at Richmond. And oh, um, so funny. They, they knocked them off. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, hey, we got treated to Duke Carolina Armageddon in the final four a couple years ago, which was, I mean, it's wild to say unprecedented as much as these teams, these right. programs, these schools play in these sports. It could be unprecedented. And, you know, UNC, yeah, UNC, not that Duke doesn't, but UNC could get to Duke, Clemson, NC State to end the year with a whole heck of a lot to play for. Um, I'm thrilled. Absolutely thrilled that we are here. Duke's going to have something to say about it. State's going to have something to say about it, too. It should be a blast. Adam Smith inside Carolina. I thank you so much for the time, man. I'll talk to you soon. Always fun. Thanks, bud. You got it. That was great. I didn't realize. 1914? Get it. How do you score as many points?